Hey guys, Nate here. So the other week we talked about what a pitcher should do prior to their start to get ready for a start. This week, I really wanna talk about what you should do after you start. So how do you recover, how do you restore that range of motion, that tissue quality to be better prepared for the next time you go, get that, rec that recovery process started early. So when I'm thinking of recovery, what I wanna do is, like I said, I wanted to restore tissue quality. So there's really three things, three steps that I wanna do after, after a start, and I kinda wanna keep them in a short period of time because after you start, after you're on the mound, you're already beat up, you're already tired, you don't wanna do anything more, so we wanna make this in the most efficient manner. So there's three things that I wanna do. I wanna do a little soft tissue so that you can do on yourself. I wanna restore the tissue quality by getting the end range motor control back. And then I also want to perform what's called a Turkish get up, which is helping control a slow and endurance based muscles to restore their, their kind of tissue quality and restore their, their patterning and motor, motor skills. So what you think about when you throw, that's a lot of high velocity effort at a very, so a very high speed. So what I wanna do to, in order to work a different energy system to restore that tissue quality is work at slower speeds and a little bit of a longer duration muscle hold so you're working a different energy system for the muscle. And that is what, where the beauty of it comes in as, as far as helping those muscles recover from the high velocity. Okay, so three things. The first one I'm gonna start off with is, is a little bit of self soft tissue or if you have somebody that you're working with, they can perform soft tissue on, on you, but there needs to be a little active, active, um, active recovery with it too. So you have to go through the range of motion. Think fully contract the muscle and fully relax the muscle as you're going through the, self soft, the, the soft tissue mobilization. So if you're by yourself, what you can do is you can grab a baseball or a lacrosse ball and work a few different areas. A few different areas that I'd wanna hit is maybe the pec, the lat, the, it's called infraspinatus, which is the muscle on the, the shoulder blade, and maybe a little bit of the muscles in between the shoulder blade and the spine. But, for, so, to go through a little bit of the, of what I mean by fully contract the muscle and fully relax the muscle, I'm gonna show you how you can hit the, what, what I call the infraspinatus, which is the muscle on the shoulder blade. What you can do is grab a, grab a baseball or lacrosse ball, and either lay down on the ground, or go up against the wall, and do this, and just put that ball, on the back of your shoulder blade and provide a little pressure. Your shoulder can be at 90 degrees and like I said, you're gonna be doing this on the wall or on the ground. And I want you to go through the range of motion of your shoulder. So that specific muscle targets rotation of the shoulder. So I'm just going back and forth once I find a tender point. And you can relax a little bit. As you do this, your head can relax. And you're just gonna find a tender point and just go about eight to 10 reps. Then maybe move that ball around a little bit, see if you can find another one, and go through that range of motion again. Okay? And like I said, you can find a few different muscles. The big ones that I, that I said were the pec, the, the lats, so right in here, the, the muscle on the shoulder blade, and then the muscles in between the shoulder blade. If you work those areas, you're gonna have a very good, very good feel for where you need to hit after your start. Each time it may be a little bit different, but see if you can find a tender point and work that area. Okay? You shouldn't spend more than, more than two to three minutes doing this after, after you go. So the next thing we want to do is if you work with somebody, so if you have an athletic trainer or if you have a physical therapist or you have, have somebody that you're working with, a good thing to do is called shoulder manuals, where essentially you're doing slow returns of the muscle. So the, the person has their hand on you and they're resisting you down through the movement. Um, so it's the counter of the movement. So if you think like a, like a pec helps bring your body close, you may, you may have them holding your wrist right here as you slowly go the opposite way. So it, the muscle's getting longer but you're still holding tension through that body. Like I said, the, the muscles go through a very high velocity throwing. So we wanna work them in a slow manner after you get done, th get done throwing so that help, one, it helps that gain that, regain that end range control, but it also works a different energy system that the muscle hasn't been used already in the past hour or so, okay? So if you don't have an athletic trainer or you don't have a physical therapist that you're working with, you can use bands to get this done as well. So a couple of, you, a couple of ones that you do, so before we threw, we did a lot of, a lot of ones that were kind of 
kind of going into the range of motion, the, the band was pulling you both directions and you were just going through the range of motion. For the one, ones that you do after you start, you're gonna use your other arm to help pull you into the end range motion, and then you're gonna slowly go back to, go back to the start, okay? What this looks like, the easiest one, the one that looks most like throwing is gonna be in a split stance with the band pulled, pulling you downwards. So what it is, if, if you think of your throwing motion, you can kind of get into a split stance, but then I want you to rotate your hips so that you're essentially looking towards the band or, or like you're looking at home after you threw. So the band's going a little bit of across your body, and then what I want you to do is use your non-throwing hand to pull yourself up into your arm slot, elbows straight, and then for a five second count, you're gonna slowly lower that band, okay? So from there, there's other, one other thing that I want to, we, we talk about the power position a lot. I want you to suck that stomach in, kind of bring your belt buckle to your ribs without losing height, and hold that position the entire time you do this. So you're just gonna pull and slowly lower, okay? And for these, we're gonna do around two sets of five, just enough to stimulate the muscle and just enough for it to work through that range of motion, but we're not, we're not trying to, we're already fatigued and tired after your start. We're not trying to, we're not trying to overtire you. We're just trying to work a different energy system for that. So there's one of them. So we can think of different, different ways to, that you can get into different hip positions. So that would be one where you're standing in, in, a, in, a, in a split stance. The other one you could do is in a, in a half kneeling position. So you're gonna be on one knee and shoulder is gonna be up at 90 degrees. So this is gonna be for external rotation. So you're gonna be on one knee, get that power position, so suck that belt buckle up to your ribs. Elbow stays up at 90. You're gonna use your non-throwing shoulder to get you back into 90, 90 degrees. Remember, power position, shoulder blades down and back, and you're gonna slowly rotate this band back to neutral. So this might be a little bit too close for me. I wanna pull this back and then create tension in the band, keep that power position, and slowly rotate back to neutral. And again, two sets of five, uh, just gaining that mobility and that, that control at the end range of that, this would be external rotation. And then for both of these, you can turn them around. You can do internal rotation too, where you pull it down into, into internal rotation, slowly lower back. And then you can go from the top um, where you're just pulling the band down here and slowly coming back up, okay? So those would be your slow returns for um, gaining motor control of your shoulder. And then the last thing I would do is working through different postures which through a Turkish get up. So what this, this is doing, you're gonna have, you can start with no weight in the hand, but then you can progress to a kettlebell which will really drive stability of the shoulder. So this is gonna be, like I said, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to perform. And that is gaining the awareness and stability back in the shoulder while giving, going through different ranges of motions. So what a Turkish get up, if you haven't seen it before, looks like is I'll show you here with this kettlebell. And if you have not done a Turkish get up before, don't start with a kettlebell. Start with something that you can make a fist and balance on your, on your fist as you go through the range of motion, okay? So what I'm gonna have you do is to do a Turkish get up, you're gonna lay on your back and the kettlebell is gonna, and one knee's gonna be bent with your foot all the way back to your butt. The other foot is gonna be at a 45 degree angle. Other arm is at a 45 degree angle as well. From here, you're gonna press that kettlebell up and lock your shoulder down so that you're not using your upper trap. But you're gonna to want to pull with your down arm as if it's holding onto something and pull yourself up to your elbow. Press the ground away to get up to your, up to your hand. And then from here, just to hold it for a little bit, you can do a little neck turns to make sure your neck's not getting stiff. And then from here, you're gonna drive through the ground and get down to the, get your knee onto the ground and then sit back up to your, up to your, up to your, el, or up to your knee. From here, bring that foot up around and then you're gonna stand up from there, okay? Then, then you're just gonna go same thing going back. So same leg, drives back down to your knee, swing this leg out to the side, sit back into your hip to bring that hand down, and then you're gonna kick that foot out, 
push the ground away down to your elbow, and then go back down to your back, okay? So, what we're doing with the Turkish get up is like I said, one, that weight, that offset weight, is really giving your shoulder a little stability that we need to, we need to get back after we throw because of, because of the high velocity, we need to stabilize at a lower speed again. But it's also working a long duration muscle contraction. So while it's up there, that muscle is contracting, which is the opposite of what it's doing on the mound. So on the mound, it has to stay tight to stabilize through a very quick, quick throw, the high velocity. But now we have to train it in a different way so that we don't lose some of the other components that we may be, may be developing while we pitch. So it, ba it creates a perfect balance after you throw so you get that main recovery and a little bit of, a, a little bit of performance tick up too um, to develop a little bit more, okay? So guys, after you get done throwing, after you work a lot on the mound, try these three different activities out to see, to get a head start on the next recovery. That way when you, when you pitch in your next game, you're at your, you're at your best again. So you're, you're, you're fully recovered, you're ready to throw at your best, you're ready to, you're ready to top, top, uh, top out again, and you'll be amazed how well you feel if you start with recovery at the end. We can get these done, these are kind of designed so that you can get them done in about 10 to 15 minutes. So you're not spending a whole hour recovering or through active, active modalities or anything like that. This is the best bang for your buck in order to get prepared for the next game. Okay, try some of these out. Let me know how you feel and I appreciate you following along. Thanks guys.